Good day and welcome to Business and Finance here on Equa Television International. I am Rachel Tanzi. Nigeria's economy has thrived differently over the years under different administrations. Since democracy, since 1999, we have seen different turn of events in our economy as a country. Many monetary policies and fiscal policies, um, different um, business um, laws, rules, regulation, and how our tax system have been working, how our import and our export. And in the past administration with President Muhammadu Buhari, we have seen a lot of ups and downs in our economy. We've seen monetary policies not being implemented properly, despite it being good for the economy, despite it being good for the system, for our money. But we have seen that we've had a dangling economy when it came to a lot of uh, monetary policies. And we've also had our fair shares of up and down, even with the fiscal policies. And we've seen how there have been a lot of bans on importation. We've seen um, our interest rates going up. We've seen inflation taking its toll on the economy. We've seen our NARA devaluing and so many other things happening to the economy and even to businesses in Nigeria. Now, with the incoming president or our current president, um, Asiwaju Bola Tinubu, we, we have seen him giving a speech and have stated some things that have already started impacting the economy of Nigeria. We've seen a lot of other anticipated things that he plans to bring into the economy, which uh, he has so many other policies that have been put in place, or we hope to see it being put in place. However, there are policies that have already started taking place and have started shaping um, the economy of the, con of the country, one of which is is the first subsidy removal. Now, before the coming in of the administration of Bola Admetinibu, the former administration started putting things in place for subsidy removal, and experts have warned Nigerians for what to be expected. That is, the fall of price would definitely go high. As it stands before the um, subsidy removal, we are already seeing a hike in fuel pump prices, and we have had our fair share of fuel scarcity. Now, with the fuel subsidy removal, we are seeing that as it stands now, we are beginning to have more queues. We are having our um, fuel station closing their gates and saying petrol is not available or waiting to know what is the current price. And as it is, there's already speculation of what the fuel point price might be as it is now. Now, this fuel subsidy removal is no news to us as Nigerians. We've been asked to brace ourselves to even be expectant of the fuel price to go as high as 700 naira per litre. Now, this wouldn't come without much expected hardship on Nigerians. Now, the period of time in which we might face the hardship is that which we do not know, but we do know for sure that if we are having scarcity of petrol or a hike, an extreme hike, we are looking at over 100 to 200 percent increase in price of petroleum, then for sure we will see that goods and services will go high, especially our food in the market, because we know that transportation plays a major role in supply of food in the market. Now, not only will we have that for our foods in the market, but even for a common man finding their way to work, transport fare is definitely going to be high. We already have motorists not knowing if fuel will be available, talk more of how much the fuel price will be for them to be able to access it and what will be for commuters every day concerning what price um, fell price will be. Now, we have NLC having concern and saying there's going to be a lot of hardship. And one of the problems is not that fuel subsidy removal is a completely bad idea. No, as it stands, Nigeria needs, for sure, our fuel subsidy to be removed because the president have assured us that the revenue that has been going to fuel subsidy will be put into places like the health sector and our education sector and other um, sectors that really need this revenue. However, the worry 
is that we do not have functioning refineries in this country. And if we were to be having refineries that are functioning, then we know for sure that we won't have to worry about false subsidy being removed because the subsidy, first of all, was put in place because we were importing oil back into the country. And now that is why the government saw it fit in that for the fuel price to be easy for a common Nigerian, there should be false subsidy. But as long as we are still importing our oil and not having our refineries fully running, then we are going to see and we are going to have a tough time because there are no refineries running yet. Now, I know that we can say there is a good news that we had the uh, Dongote refinery not, um, not long ago being inaugurated. However, petrol coming out from that refinery will be till June. And before we will be able to show, we, before we will be sure 100 percent that the Dongote refinery will be able to meet the 38 million um, liters of fuel consumed by Nigerians daily until it starts production and until we start seeing this petrol circulated easily. And we know that the government is not importing oil back into the country, then it is not yet good news. But we are sure to brace ourselves that we are going to keep seeing an increase in fuel pump prices. Now, Nigerians have concerns of exploit because the common man don't know yet how much in the first place was the subsidy on petrol in the country and how much more now are we talking about as increase. We are at the mercy of fuel um, station and then fuel distributors to give us a fuel price that is not what that we will say we're not being exploited. So it's left for the government to see that they put in um, strategies in place, that they put in plans to make sure that we are not being exploited when it comes to the fuel of price because now subsidy is out of the way. Now, one of the steps, the major step that the government started taking in the past administration, and I believe there'll be a continuity because this has been in the eye of the public is the 800 million dollar subsidy palliative gotten by the finance minister from the World Bank. Now this palliative is set to be targeted at 10 million Nigerians who are at the poverty um, level that is below um, low um, average income earning, minimum wages rather, income earning. Now we know that the statistics of people living in poverty in Nigeria is way above 10 million. We are looking about more than half of our population where there is a report that shows data of over 133 million Nigerians living in poverty, meaning if the government really wants to give a palliative to help people not to feel the impact of fuel subsidy, then they have to be targeting nothing less than 100 million Nigerians, not 10 million Nigerians. However, as citizens of the country, we will appreciate every single effort made by the government to make sure that Nigerians don't feel the impact of fuel subsidy removed, how, uh, of fuel subsidy being removed. And not only that, but let them make sure that this hardship, because for sure there will be that impact but it should be for a very short period of time. That is one way we will know that, yes, the government of Nigeria plans on making the economy not hard for, the con for people in the country, but that we are heading um, steps ahead to make sure that we are independent and no longer importing oil into the country. Now, one of the policies that we are seeing e economical coming from um, the speech of the, pres of the current president of the country is the single exchange rate. Now, one of the major challenges we faced in the past administration was a continuous monthly increase in our exchange rate. The Naira kept devaluing its, uh, its strength to the dollar. We were looking at, there was a point in time where we had our exchange rate to 900 Naira to a dollar, and we saw that our currency kept on devaluing. Now, one of the major 
challenges we've been facing is that we have two exchange rate. One we know it as the black market, where it is different from the official rate of the CBN, where we are having our NARA in the foreign exchange market, it's given by the CBN, never going above 550 NARA per dollar. In the black market, we are having our currency reaching way above 700 and 900. Now, this alone have given us an instable exchange rate, which already portrays us as unserious to our foreign investors. And I've also, because a lot of times the market that are, are being used for exchange is the black market, whereas that is not supposed to be acceptable because it is one of the reason, the major reason that we are having a devalued currency at a high rate. So um, Bola Ahmed Tunibu have promised us that this is one of his agenda to stabilizing our Naira, that we have a single exchange rate in the country. Now, we've been having a very high debt profile. Now, let's have it in mind that borrowing or loaning money didn't start with the past administration. It has been ever since our democracy, since 1999, the Fourth Republic, ever since the Obasanjo administration, we've been having a high um, debt profile. We've been having a rising debt profile. Come the good luck, Jonathan administration, we've had our fair share of um, high debt profile. However, it has doubled. It went beyond 100, 200, and 300 percent increase in our debt profile. Now, if this current administration, which I believe uh, the current administration know exactly what to do, is that one way to tackle this, which of course the president have mentioned it, is low borrowing or no borrowing at all. Secondly, is to make sure that we do not default in our loan repayment. We already know that some of the money we have taken from the CB and uh, from the World Bank, we are going to take nothing less than 25 years with our agreement with the World Bank to pay it and our debt profile per um, citizen has increased to over 300,000. This wasn't the case some five, ten years ago, but as it stands now, if every Nigerian was to pay their own share of the debt we owe as a country, we are talking about 300,000, 338,000 there about per citizen. Now, this administration have clearly stated that they know that low borrowing is one way to make sure that our debt profile go low and also no borrowing and using appropriately what we have already taken as loan from China, from the World Bank and from other countries that have given us a lending hand. And we also have our GDP growth now. In the last quarter of 2022, we had our GDP um, staggering, growing to about 3.2%. Um, and in the first quarter of 2023, it became slower. And we're just looking about, um, we're looking about 2.1 or thereabout um, growth in our, GD, in our GDP now. And Tinebu is assuring us that we will have a gross domestic um, product that could go up to 6%. We are sure that Nigeria has all the resources it takes for our GDP to not only grow but consistently and at a fast rate because this will mean that we will be producing and exporting more than what we consume. There will be employment. We will have inflation going low. We will have our currency not devalued. This just means a stabilized economy that is steadily growing and we are looking forward to that. And not only in, in line with our GDP growing, we are looking at over a million jobs created in the digital um, economy. This has been one economy that has been neglected by the past administration. But we are seeing a new administration that is saying that this um, digital space has potential for Nigerian youth and for anybody that is willing to cash out of the digital economy. Countries, other countries have benefited from it, have thrived through it, and it is time for Nigeria to also benefit from the digital economy. And we are having our president saying that the digital economy is the way forward for Nigerians. And we've had the monetary policy that 
put Nigeria on their toe in the beginning of the year before the uh, um, general elections in February, where we had a cash crunch in the country um, in, as a result of the new Naira redesign. And we saw that a lot of lives were lost. We saw businesses closing. We saw our standard of living going beyond a level that we could not comprehend. Now, the, um, the president is telling us that he is going to look into the Naira redesign policy. Now, what he plans to do exactly with it, we do not know for sure, but he has clearly let us know that it is in his agenda to look at the new Naira design and the policy. Now, if we remember, the Sabian president and the past administration of Bari said it was for corruption to make sure that the Naira out there circulating was, banked to, uh, was back into the CBN, into our banks, not out there, and to also counter fake uh, Naira notes to be able to fight banditry, kidnapping, and ransom giving because there was a lot of old Naira notes in circulation and to also help with the value of our currency and to boost our exchange rate in the foreign exchange market. Now, we are not, we for sure can say if this Naira redesign have achieved that purpose yet. However, the president is assuring us that he is going to look into the Naira redesign to make sure that we do not go through what we went through, that there won't be no cash crunch, there would be no scarcity, and above all, there would be no inflation or hardship put on Nigerian citizens. And we can also talk about our interest rate. As we've seen, that there have been a continuous increase in our interest rate. We, we saw it going from 17% to 17.5%. And not long ago, the MPC sat down. And we are seeing our interest rate going, uh, adding a 0.50% increase from 18% to 18.5%. And as long as we keep facing inflation, narrow devaluing, and all of these other factors that affect the, uh, the interest Interest rate, the CBN have assured us that there's going to be a continuous increase in the interest rate until there is some stability in inflation, until there's some stability in our exchange rate and all of that. Now, the president is assuring us that that will be looked into. We've seen how businesses are lamenting and small scale businesses are closing down because they cannot have access to loans. Even if the loans are available, the interest rates are outrageous for small businesses. And even the big businesses cannot keep up with such interest rate. Now, we not only need it to go down, but for it to be normalized. We're looking forward to the president working on this interest rate that it goes down to the level that small scale um, businesses do not suffer and that loans are accessible even for small business startup to be able to go to the bank and have access to loans without fear of interest rate being outrageous. Now, these are a few among the many, many policies that the president have promised Nigerians to look into it. Now, we have clearly seen how this will affect the economy, and we are keeping our fingers crossed, hoping and knowing that the president, of course, have Nigerians in had have the blueprint for us to grow economically, has all the resources in his disposal to make sure that we see a more thriving Nigerian economy. And that's all on business and finance today. Goodbye.